Thank you for letting him in. Welcome. Okay, so let's begin with our meditation this evening. <clears throat> you may bring your body to a resting position, closing your eyes. Starting to breathe in and breathe out with the intention of calming the bodily sensations. Notice also the way of your body at this moment. Some agitations, some places where you need to relax further. Maybe sometimes some trauma, Bodies carrying grief. So let us cultivate patience as we let these things come and go and allow them to sit in your awareness. To begin with, you may notice that you can pay attention to the starting point of your breath and the ending point of your breath. Notice also the rhythmic nature of your body's breathing. How your lungs function, shoulders move. You feel the air entering your nostrils and leaving. Collecting all that power and energy to yourself. Noticing what that power and energy do from the center of your being. Maybe you create space or spaciousness. Easing things, dropping the past, dropping the future, being here and now with the present.
Gently pay attention to how calm abiding this is. No schedule, no meeting. No mental formations. Nothing disturbs the presence of this tranquility that is taking space in our entire being at this moment. As you scan your body, in anywhere in your body, if you see any, notice any agitation, you may give metta, loving friendliness, non-judgmental awareness, inducing mind with metta at this moment, allowing your awareness to be expanded across this room and beyond, transcending any fear, any anxiety, any doubt, to welcoming acceptance nurturing qualities of patience friendliness caring non cruelty in the most powerful thing you have that is your mind. Mind knows, mind sees, things arise, things stay and things vanish. This quality of knowing without any Interference. Without any controlling. Also not knowing what arises next is key to awakening. So apply mindfulness also to your breath. If you can revisit your breath, mindfully you breathe in, mindfully you breathe out. Noticing long breath and short breath as they happen naturally. You breathe in and breathe out, calming your bodily sensations. You also breathe in, breathe out, allowing the breath to disappear. Or oh, in that sense, allowing the body to disappear or parts of your body to disappear and not being shaken 
by it. That moment when you can panic, you choose to be mindful and fully aware that this too shall pass. Whether it is a feeling or a thought or any moment of discomfort, this too shall pass. You don't, still don't feel like it to meditate. Maybe you can breathe in, rolling up your shoulders and dropping your shoulders. So your whole body is engaged with this one activity of mindful breathing. Seeing, hearing, smelling, tasting, physical sensations and thinking are all closed. Six doors closed except for being mindful about the object of your meditation, that is, your breath. Calming the bodily sensations, you breathe in and breathe out. There is no sense of sight, sense of sounds, although sounds may arise, you drop them quickly without any struggle, without a need to investigate. And your brain begins to relax. And wherever your breath is, you will bring your attention to your breath continuously. Mindfully, you breathe in. Mindfully, you breathe out.
Now you will hear some words of loving kindness. You may arouse the feeling corresponding to these words to induce your mind with loving kindness. Mitta. So we are switching from breathing, switching our meditation from breathing to loving friendliness. May I be well and happy. May I be peaceful and calm. May I be free from danger and harm. May all my good purposes be fulfilled. Like a mother protecting her only child. May all beings be touched by my loving kindness, expansive and wide. May my parents and siblings Teachers and friends All the relatives of mine All beings above, below and across All the animals, celestial beings and those in woeful plains, those near and far away. All benefactors, supporters, may all beings be well and happy. May all beings be well and happy. May all beings be well and happy. This will help you quickly concentrate your mind or quickly arrive at stillness. And that is the power of cultivating boundless love. Keep radiating it until there is no more boundaries, no more stopping at enemies or difficult people, freeing them 
completely from your springs by easily breaking any clinging to any difficult person. Freeing your heart completely and surrendering to the light and wisdom of loving kindness. Just like the sun radiating on earth without claiming it as mine. And that work illuminates the sky everywhere. So you become the light. Instead of focusing on shortcomings of people, instead of wanting to fix them, you cultivate and nurture patience, friendliness, non-cruelty and caring in your mind. May all beings be well and happy. May all beings be safe. May all beings be free from hunger and illness. May all beings be able to drop hatred and enmity, filling their hearts with loving kindness and friendliness. Free from poison, may all beings be free. May all beings be free. May all beings be free from mental and physical ties. May there be liberation everywhere, accessible to all beings. You may radiate, create more waves of loving kindness, starting from you, including you, and permeating loving kindness, filling your mind with loving kindness, radiating it like a lighthouse, beautifying every place, every corner that needs it, wherever it is needed. Until you hear the sound of the gong.
Van Poyet. So we have a very short teaching for today. Let us read it together. This is the Sedaka Sutta, uh, Bamboo Acrobat. Uh, we have many translations of this. Uh, so I chose Andrew Olinsky's translation because some of the words go very closely with Pali words. So um, I like reading it together. And when you read, pay attention to what stands out to you. The Buddha addressed the monks. Once upon a time, monks, a bamboo acrobat, setting himself upon his bamboo pole, addressed his assistant, Medaka Thalika. Come you, my dear Medaka Thalika, and climbing up the bamboo pole, stand upon my shoulders. Okay, master, the assistant Medaka Thalika replied, to the bamboo acrobat. And climbing up the bamboo pole, she stood on the master's shoulders. So then the bamboo acrobat said this to his assistant, Medhakathalika. You look after me, my dear Medhakathalika, and I will look after you. Thus, with us looking after one another, Guarding one another, we will show off our craft, receive some payment, and safely climb down the bamboo pole. This being said, the assistant Medhagathalika said this to the bamboo acrobat. That will not do at all, master. You look after yourself, master, and I will look after myself. We will show off our craft, receive some payment, and safely climb down from the bamboo pole. That is the right way to do it. The Buddha said, just like the assistant Medhakathalika said to her master, I will look after myself, so should you, monks. Practice the establishment of loving uh, of mindfulness. You should also practice the establish, establishment of mindfulness by saying, I will look after others. Looking after oneself, one looks after others. Looking after others, one looks after oneself. And how does one looks af look after others by looking after oneself, by practicing mindfulness, by developing it, by doing it a lot? And how does one look after oneself by looking after others, by patience, by non-harming, by loving kindness, by caring for others? Thus, looking after oneself, one looks after others, and looking after others, one looks after oneself. So I will skip the next lines and go to the last. The story is telling us that ultimately, we are responsible for our own balance and would be foolish to direct our attention to others while neglecting our own inner focus. And yet, others are directly affected by how well we do this. So, then they talk about insight meditation as a form of meditation called vipassana. is not a selfish undertaking because the quality of our interaction with all those around us depends on the degree of our own self-understanding and self-control. That only took five minutes, less than that. What do you think is interesting in this teaching? One word, maybe a statement. 
maybe more than one word or a statement or questions. I'll pick patience. Which I think is, you know, we, we have the opportunity to get mad, but you still don't. That is patience. So the Pali word for that is khanti. K-H-A-N-T-I. Khanti. And some translators have translated it as acceptance, which is not same as patience, right? So I preferred this translation for that reason. Anything else? No, no. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So true. And uh, this response of master, I think this is from the master too. That is the right way to do it. Also suggests that that is what I meant. When I say, you look after me, I meant that. You look after yourself by doing that. You are also looking after me so that we can survive this business. The difficulty of it performing. You know, you have seen people come into the center of a town and perform like this. Uh, if you go to Boston downtown or Venice or Verona, Milano, you will see them. He's from Italy. So. <laughs> All these people do dif difficult performances. I saw that in India also recently. This little girl with a pot of water in, in her head, she was walking on a thread with no other, also with a stick to balance me. So, uh, and she was very skilled at it. I, I, I wouldn't, I, Italians do walk on a, um, on a rope for Leisure, leisure, they just, <laughs> when they come into, I think people do it here too sometimes in a public park. But this is more difficult than that. You are high up, way up above the ground and uh, protecting oneself is key in that kind of performance, acrobatic performances. And I remember when I was in grade eight, um, some Chinese uh, circus team came to my school and they performed to us. And it was very difficult that they stand on these wheels without falling and, and they climb up further and further. It, it, for those who are watching it, it is very anxiety producing. Um, but I was amazed at their performance at the time. Yeah, this is very, very much uh, uh, the key here that you protect yourself and by protecting yourself, you protect the others. And also it's interesting that the pupil, the student reminds this to the te teacher. And they're actually starting there. The story goes that they, they just first performed it in front of a large audience and they all applauded it and they gave money and then they made it their main career. They wanted to perform like that. So in the very beginning, it's important to, in the, in the very beginning of a relationship also, this is also like a, an acrobatic performance. <laughs> very difficult task where you need to protect yourself all the time. Otherwise you are pouring from an empty cup. No. Right. So, yeah. Anything else? Yeah. You know, it doesn't make logical sense, but I have like a desire for it to be one or the other. Hmm. You know, like the certainty of one and the other. Hmm.
pulls them into one another they say to balance them. I mean to say to balance it will change always, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially when you are walking on a stick, maybe six, seven, ten meters above the ground, that that your body is con continuously asking for balance. Just like the two sides of you trying to adjust like this, completely balance your body and stay from falling. It's very interesting that you said this, that it, if what if it could be once, you know, one, not both sides, right? <laughs> well, yeah, it's just like I know that it can't be, but like I have a desire to like fit into one, hmm. you know? Like yeah. I have to, maybe what it is, it's like if it were just one, you wouldn't have to wear the thing. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I guess I have an initial like resistance <laughs> to the right. knowledge that I must learn. Mm. And then even when I'm learning, you can't like forget about it. You know what I mean? Like, mm. because it's so yeah. That skill of navigating. Yeah, we can also look at the four qualities here patience, non harming, loving kindness, and caring. Can you do it? Um, without the others, right? We can, to a certain extent, we can be patient with ourselves. We can be non-cruel to us. We can be loving to us. And we can be caring to us. But there's also the impossibility of us being just one unit in a society that we always have to go buy stuff or work and there's the uh, these others around us who also remind us of these qualities and demand them from us and that way just as we give it to ourselves we also give it to others and the statement that looking after oneself you look after others looking after others you look after yourself So, so these four qualities, Kanti, Avihinsa, Metta, and Anudeta. Kanti is for patience, Avihinsa for non-harming, Metta for loving kindness, and Anudeta for caring. And sometimes in a relationship, you do Sometimes wonder if, if you are too patient. That gets you used. That that kind of patience gets you. Um, sometimes you need to put one foot on the ground to show show your boundaries and stand. You know what I mean. So sometimes it's just like they say, kindness gets you used. So it's it's also best to be willing to lose um, that relationship if it is uh, if it is taking too much of your something time or finances or something otherwise we are going to not be able to protect ourselves when we are in trouble that we are calling for trouble Anyway, anything else? Enough of me speaking. What is the word for wildness? Yeah. <clears throat> Mindfulness, right? Sati. So sati, I was thinking is self control. But here it thinks it's very strong because by practicing self reflect, by developing self reflect, by doing self reflect, so um, sati 
in terms of practicing these four qualities, patience, non-harming, you can always be mindful if you are patient. You can always be mindful if you are caring, if you are loving, if you are also abandoning thoughts of cruelty. So that also is a continuous game that mind plays, always judging what is wholesome and what is unwholesome. And the job of mindfulness is to remind you to stick with the wholesome, which is the most difficult thing to do. Okay. That you are weighing or you are making these points yeah. for the Yeah. And that way mindfulness, of course, John Kabat-Zinn says it's non-judgmental awareness, but there is some judgment there initially to choose um, what is wholesome from un unwholesome. But arriving at that awareness, after arriving there, there is no need to do that distinction because it's already, it has happened. Yeah. So I think self-reflection uh, alone does not completely do the, mind, the job of mindfulness because right mindfulness is emphasized by the Buddha all the time. Um, that is called Sammasati. Um, because there are there is there are other ways of cultivating mindfulness that can be called wrong mindfulness. It's like black and white. And avoiding wrong mindfulness is important so that we don't fall into beliefs that meditation does everything. Like you know, all these research papers papers keep telling now. And avoiding mindfulness also is important that you don't feed or you are not too self-aware of the negativities or you don't become too critical about things, right? So the mindfulness plays a role in, in that job also to not feed fears. So you choose to run, you choose to swim, you choose to do other activities, not completely closing everything and going to your room and just meditating and wanting meditation to solve it. If we were explaining <clears throat> the right mindfulness of samasati and the wrong mindfulness of michasati. Yeah. Those are bad examples. Those, those are michasati. Sorry. Yeah. Right. Wrong so, mindfulness. So, yeah, I want to learn more about this. Because, again, mindfulness, the way I thought about the word, was completely off. Like, I was always sit with the facts for the mind. So, the previous question, I did my past, I always struggled to understand how the different factors influence the good part. Because, again, it's very hard for me to see in that. Mm. Yeah. But also, now the mindfulness means self awareness. Perfection and not the general self not the good one, yeah, the wrong one. I have been all questions, mm -hmm. <laughs> also more examples, yeah. Maybe if you saw the right mindfulness, then you saw the say you, you feel loving kindness and you use mindfulness to be mindful of it and cultivate more of it because it's good for you, it's good for others. And you also feel a level of stillness in you and there's nothing to fear there. You cultivate it. That's also, you make more of it so that you become firm and uh, firm, very stable with that mindfulness. And you more dharma you learn, you learn that you can cultivate seven factors of awakening. That includes mindfulness, as a factor of awakening, investigating your mind as a factor of awakening, making more effort as a factor of awakening, and rapture as a factor of awakening, tranquility as a factor of awakening. So all those other factors that you will otherwise ignore, you can cultivate them and make more of it instead of just... Um, 
sometimes people close their eyes and they start visualizing things and they, they freak out when they start seeing weird things. All they had to do was just to bring mindfulness and see, okay, why am I freaking out? Can I program my mind in such a way that I don't fear these things because they arise and pass away? That's also the job of mindfulness, recognize when that happens and still stay there and let it go, not own it, not control it, because something else arises anyway. And you can't keep anything permanently there, because that's the scope of awareness. So the definition of mindfulness, one definition could be that, you know, paying attention to what your mind is doing continuously while you are doing other things, because you can be walking home thinking of another home, because your mind is continuously doing these other businesses. But you don't have to force it to bring it to the activity you are doing as long as it's safe. It's not on the unwholesome side. Because you can also go home hating the president of this country or hating the driver who was you know, crazy on this. So what's the point of doing that? It's, it's, it's also... It your self realizes that there's no point cultivating that because you bring it home and you maybe you throw it at, at the cat or the dog who was innocent and was wanting your love. When you are mindful, you notice it early enough and it drops all that wanting to react to everything away from living very different way of life after that. Without mindfulness, there's no way of recognizing that this is happening to us. Now, one thing the um, message came to think of was like that when I trade in games when I went school, and they had the same, you don't work, you don't eat. And I, I don't know, like I got kind of military <laughs> things from it. Like, I don't like my dad was in the military and yeah, you, know, you do your work, other people will support you. I guess it's almost like that, but with an opposite mm. idea behind it. I don't know. Like, do you agree with that? Or? Yeah. Uh, and it's like nothing is free in the world, right? So you, you do your part, yeah. whether it is work or meditation or cultivating these four qualities of patience, non-harming, loving kindness, and caring. You always do your part without expecting others to be that way. Because you see a reflection of you in others most of the time. <laughs> Not all the time. If you go to this, like the old thought, like Buddha only agree with medical. Medica, uh, but not but not her last. So, but today I learned that Buddha actually agree with both. Yeah. You want to put the two together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's harder because I agree with you that it's easier, <laughs> easier to stick with the one or the other. I mean, either you focus on yourself or you focus on, I mean, it's hard. There should be like a priority of the secondary. I was actually thinking about this. Today. Priority is oneself, I think. Yeah, priority of oneself. That is hard. And this requires us to do the hard thing because if you love anything that stops you from loving yourself, you need to let that thing go. We forget about ourselves sometimes by bending too much and breaking. <laughs> And then nobody's there to fix you at that. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about this verse this morning. Yeah, first you advise first, yourself. yourself. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yourself. Functioning. <laughs> yeah. The Pali for this is Atanan Rakanto, when you are protecting oneself. Parangrakati, you protect others. Parangrakanto, when you protect others, Atanandakati, you protect oneself. 
But did I interrupt you? You were going no, to say no. something. So in doing that, you know, let's apply this to romantic love. People who start feeling some feelings because of some individuals, they they wait for an opportunity to express it. And when that love is not reciprocated, they start hating that person from that point onward. They cannot do it if they understood this teaching, that when you love that person, you love all of their being, their overall mental and physical well-being. There's no way you can hate that person because it it's, it's showing a bad side of you that that person is doing their own things in life. And they, they may not be ready to even reciprocate the love life. Then it's okay. But it makes you a wonderful person when you can be, cultivate patience and still continue to care with or without receiving the same love you try to keep giving. And uh, and then no cruel no cruel thoughts will arise in your mind because otherwise it's incomplete. You are not protecting yourself. Hatred, cruelty enters your mind. Non that carelessness enters your mind. You lose patience. All those other things enter your mind, and you get wounded, and you bring that forward to a next relationship. Lots of grasping. So mindfulness is also key in preventing that from happening. One thing that strikes me about the example, and I don't know exactly how this works, but when I was in Asia, or in someone on the ball, or someone on the show. That too, yeah, yeah. The thing becomes one. But many times you can think, oh, it's me or it's the other relationship. Mm. Mm -hmm. Or it's me for some gain. Mm. If I don't take care, if I want to take care of me, I need not to get mm -hmm. vice versa. In this example, you like, in this thing, you like, if one falls, everyone falls. Like, it's yeah. just one thing. It yeah. Strikes me as an example in which the harder you bring to the other, automatically you're now able. Yeah. Yeah. Not always to think of the relationship with mm -hmm. others that mm -hmm. like we are a couple and we have a problem as a couple. Mm -hmm. No, I'm not like, hey, you you <laughs> or you have a problem. No. Yeah. So it's very beautiful you explain that about you no. Know, It's like united we stand, divided we fall. Mm -hmm. You know, same thing. Um, but yeah. But that makes me think that, like the um, the unit, when you unit need the skills to participate <laughs> in, you know, mm -hmm. um, yeah. You, that, that that is a quality of the situation as well. Mm. That both have the skills to engage the family and the family. <laughs> yeah, let's keep cultivating these qualities. Maybe wrap it up here because the next group is coming, as you can hear. <laughs> Although I love to continue the conversation. Let's share merits. May the suffering ones be suffering free and the fear struck fearless be. May the grieving shed all grief and may all beings find relief. May all beings share this merit that we have thus acquired for the acquisition of all kinds of happiness. May beings inhabiting space and earth, devas and nagas of mighty power share this merit of ours. May they long protect the Buddha's dispensation, sadhu, sadhu, sadhu.